All right, we're back with a new section for the first time in a while, not just review stuff here, guys. So we're back to 6.2. Your 6.1 homework should have been submitted, uh, I think, hopefully by today is the day I said. I forget if it was today or Friday. Either way, that should be in by now. Uh, please email me that. But let's move on to volumes. So we currently know how to find the volumes of simple 3D shapes, such as cylinders or a rectangular box. And really all that takes is you find how big the base area is and you multiply it by the height. Same thing for the rectangular box. You find how big that base area is, and you multiply it by the height. So this is gonna work for um, even harder kind of 3D shapes. You take the cross section of the 3D shape and multiply it by the height. So what I mean by cross section is, like if you would cut that cylinder, you're just gonna get a circle there. So circles are cross section. You cut the rectangular box, you get a rectangle as your cross section. Uh, same exact thing. Find the base shape, even if it changes as the size moves along, you're still going to have the same base uh, shape, even if the area is changing. And then we add up just an infinite number of them. So the volume formula is we integrate from A to B, so from the start to the end of the shape, uh, the area of the shape uh, with respect to X. So that area is the base area or cross section area. And that dx is going to stand for the height. And we're going to do that because, remember, integration is taking an infinite number of things and just adding them all together as we move along. It'll make a little more sense after we do this first example here. So example one, we want to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating uh, about the x-axis the region under the curve y equals the square root of x. So y equals the square root of x is gonna look like this. And we'll say this is up to one. And that would go to one, one. Not quite proportional there. But we're revolving this around the x-axis. So think we're actually taking this. And we're swinging it around, which is actually going to create the same exact shape on the other side. I'm going to dot that in because that's kind of where we're swinging it to. And all of a sudden we have uh, it's curved here too so let me represent the curves with something like that, right? We're constantly swinging this around the x-axis. We make some solid shape here. So this kind of looks like I don't know, like a roast ham or something like that. You take out for a <laughs> Christmas or Thanksgiving or something. Uh, and we want to find out exactly what this volume is. So we are going to have to look at that formula we have. That volume is going to equal integration from A to B of our area dx. And I think the easiest thing to find here is what are those endpoints? So where do we start from and where do we finish? We started at 0 and we went to 1 because we were with respect to x here. And I'll explain why we knew that we were with respect to x in just a second. So the x was from 0 to 1, so that's our bounds. Now we need the area. So what shape do we get if we kind of cut this? So think if you just took something and chopped it straight down, what shape are we getting if we look at it? And that would be a circle, is the shape that we would get if we cut this thing. Now the question becomes, well, what is the radius of this circle? No matter where you cut it, the radius is going to be a little different, right? We know it's bigger over here than it is over here, but we need to represent this kind of generally. And the radius is always going to be square root of x, because think from the center up, that's a distance of square root of x. So even as it's shrinking as we're going farther down, the radius is still always the square root of x. Now I want to be thinking, well, what's the area of this shape? A circle. That area would be pi r squared. So the area should be pi 
times the square root of x squared, which is pi x, which we can take this and put it in here. That's our area, pi x. So we now have a area and we have our bounds, so we can actually integrate this thing and find out what the exact volume would be. The pi is a constant. And we plug all this in and this is just gonna be pi over two. So that is the exact volume of the square root of x when it's rotated around the x-axis, just the region from zero to one. Okay, maybe a lot to get there. We're gonna do another example and see how it's gonna work pretty much the same way. The only thing I've left out, which I said I was gonna to get to, um, is how we knew it was with respect to x. If you're rotating around the x-axis or something parallel to it, Uh, you're going to be with respect to the x variable. And that's going to be a rule that holds for this whole section for us for volumes. So anytime you're rotating around the x-axis or any line that's parallel to it, it's going to be with respect to x. Let's look at another example. Here, we want to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating a region bounded by y equals x to the third, y equals 8, and x equals 0 about the y-axis. Okay. So this time we're rotating it about the y-axis. Going to change some things there. But let's get this picture drawn first. So y equals x to the third normally looks something... like this, y equals 8, let's say this is 8, and then finally x equals 0 is this line here, so this is y equals 8, and let's just say this one's x equals 0. So the region we have currently is this one. So I don't care about the line y equals 8 going either to the side, above or below here for x equals 0. I don't care about this uh, x cubed that's down here. I just care about this little uh, kind of curved figure right here. And we want to rotate that about the, what do we say, the y-axis. So if it's go, going around the y-axis, I think it's spinning this way. So we're taking this whole thing and spinning it around and around. And it's going to look something like this. Maybe like a top or like the, I don't know, some kind of cup or goblet there. That's like the top part. That's what that's looking like to me as we're spinning this thing around. And the next thought maybe you want to have is setting up our integral. So yet again, we're looking uh, from somewhere to somewhere. Let's say A to B here for some area. And I have with respect to X here, but you should have noticed we're spinning about the Y axis. So really what this should be saying is with respect to Y. You should identify it's with respect to Y which means these bounds are with respect to y. So what's the lowest y value here? Zero, and the largest is eight. Now we have to find out what this area shape is going to be. So that means we need to take a cross section. Notice, before we've been chopping this way. However, you always want to make that cross section chop kind of perpendicular to what you're spinning about. So here, I would chop it this way and try to see what shape we're getting. Yet again, if we're chopping it that way, we're getting a circle. 
and we would like to find what the radius of that circle is because we do know that the area should be pi r squared off of that. Now since we're with respect to y, we're going to have to adjust what this is going to be. This is in terms of x, because it's y equals x to the third. So if we're going this way, y equals x to the third actually becomes x equals the cube root of y. So everything now has to be with respect to y, not with respect to x. Plugging that in, we get the cube root of y squared. And maybe you want to think of that as y to the 2 thirds. So we can put that right into our equation we have over here. Great. Now it's just going through and doing some basic integration from here. So 2 thirds, we want to take the antiderivative of it. The pi is still there. That's just a constant. This becomes 5 thirds. Notice that we're going to need that 3 fifths to come here. And now we need from 0 to 8. The 0 is not going to affect us, just the 8 is, because when we plug 0 in, that's going to be nothing. And now we've got to figure out what the 5 thirds of 8 is, or 8 to the 5 thirds. So take that cube root first. So cube root of 8 gets us 2. 2 to the 5th gets us a lot bigger number. Uh, 2, 4, 16. What's that, 32? And let's put this all in one nice, neat fraction. So this is going to be our final answer. 96 pi over 5 is going to be the volume of this figure rotated around the y axis. Okay, and kind of that same side note we had before. If rotating about the y axis or something parallel to it, then with respect to y is what we're going to be looking for. That's going to be pretty much the, the telltale clue, is what are we spinning around? Is it parallel to the x or y axis, or is it the x or y axis? Okay, let's use this information. This is something I've kind of hinted at throughout the year, that we don't know what the volume of a sphere is. I mean, we know the equation, but you couldn't explain why. We're actually now going to be able to do that. So here we're going to show that the volume of a sphere of radius r is in fact the 4 thirds pi r cubed that we've been using for however many years, at least since geometry back in ninth grade. Okay, so I have started off by drawing a semicircle here, and that's going to be the shape that we are rotating around the x-axis here. And I think when we're rotating around the x-axis, the shape that we will be getting, kind of the cross-section shape, is circles that we're going to be getting here. That's a really bad circle. Whoops. So we need to think what is the equation of a circle, and then what's the equation of a semicircle. So if you've forgotten, the general equation for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Solving for y... The square root of r squared minus x squared. Notice specifically this is just the positive version because I just used the top half here. If you want to use the bottom half, it's going to work out the same exact way. So now we're going to take this little cross section we made here and say, oh, well, that's a circle. And notice kind of as we progress along this sphere that we've made, uh, that the circle gets bigger up in the middle and then it decreases again down till the end. So we have to find out what is uh, the radius kind of of this little circle that we have in here. I know it's maybe confusing that I'm using that same R. Let's do a capital R here. 
So looking at that, uh, the radius here is going to be, how do I want to set this up? Uh, do we do the triangles here? Yeah, we do. So given wherever we're at in this shape, there is a right triangle here. Right thing from the center, so there's a right triangle. Radius is R, X is here, Y is here. So to get what that kind of radius is, we'd have to solve for kind of the Pythagorean theorem here, which is yet again just solving for Y. So that is going to get us square root of R squared minus X squared is what that will be. Same exact thing as we go along. That's always what that Y value is going to be, which makes sense here because we kind of did it already. So finding out what that area is, since it's pi, we use big R squared here. We square that, and this ends up being nice, just r squared minus x squared. Great. Now we have to set this up in our volume formula. Say that we are spinning it around the x-axis, so it is going to be with respect to x. Let's think of our bounds. What's the smallest bound we have way down here? Remember, our radius is r, so that means this is going to be a negative r. And this one is a positive r. And then we have that the area here is pi r squared minus x squared. And we would like to integrate this. Remember, x is the variable we're integrating. Uh, this pi can come out front. That's not really affecting us. We're just going to have a pi at the end. Antiderivative of r squared is going to be r squared x, and then for x it's going to be x to the third over 3, and then we're from negative r to r. Let's plug in r and negative r here, remember it's for the x values. So we're going to have r to the third here, minus r to the third over 3. minus, it's going to be a negative r to the third, plus r to the third over 3. You notice this neg negative is going to go through, so we really have double them. And when we subtract it, it's 2 thirds r, and then this is going to be another 2 thirds r. I guess I can do that out instead of talking that out. r squared minus a negative two-thirds r squared, and that's going to get us a four-thirds pi r squared. Right, those combine and become positive. So we've actually proven that the volume of a sphere of radius r is that formula we've been using for a long time. Nice, we're getting there. Okay. Let's look at this next bit here. So let's find the region enclosed by the curves y equals x and y equals x squared when it's rotated about the x-axis. So adding a little bit of a twist in here. So y equals x, we know, is the straight line. y equals x squared kind of curves up. And we get this little sliver, kind of crescent moon looking type of shape here. And that's the only region that's going to be enclosed here, because think x squared is just this u parabola, and x is just the straight line, so that's the only region we're getting. And we're spinning that around the x-axis, so it's spinning down here. This should be symmetrical. It's not, but it's close. And we're spinning here. What's different about this one in comparison to kind of our other questions? Think if I took a cross section, because we're going with the x-axis, and chopped it there. It's not just a circle we're getting. Because think, if you go from the outside, 
you're getting a circle, but then on the inside you have another one. So all of a sudden you get a shape that looks like this. Uh, and we call this one a washer. I think if you've ever done anything with construction, the little metal washers, it's exactly what this looks like. So this is now a washer we've created. You can think of it maybe like a donut as well. And so we have the middle here, and then we have the, what we call little r, and then we have what we're gonna call big r, the big radius. And we want to find those, because really the only area we have going on here is kind of the metallic part here. That middle is cut out, that's empty and hollow. So what is this smaller radius? Going back to the picture, it's the difference here. Right, the center was just zero. Uh, let me draw another one to help us out. The center point was just zero. The next one that we hit kind of going up or out was we hit what, x squared, and then we hit x. So to find out what the smaller radius is, is you need to subtract these. So x squared minus zero is just x squared. That's that radius. The other one, you subtract the outside from the middle, so that's x minus zero. That's just gonna leave us with x. And remember, we just wanted this part here. So to find that area, that's pi, times big R squared minus pi times little r squared. And how we typically think about it is you just factor out that pi. So it's big R squared minus little r squared. And let's plug that in for the information that we have here. So big R squared is going to be x, and we need to square that, minus x squared squared right, because it's r squared, so we need to square them. So that's going to be x squared minus x to the fourth. And no, Jude, we cannot subtract those to make that negative x squared. That's not how that's going to work out. This is as good as we're going to get for this area. So we can now create our formula and go from there, our volume formula. So what's the smallest x value? What's the biggest x value? Ooh, I guess that's another thing we should talk about. We know that it crossed here at the point zero, zero. And then what's this point up here where they both cross? If you don't know that, you have to set them equal to each other. When does x equals x squared? So if you really want to solve this. So x equals zero and one are going to be our options here. So yes, this now meets at what ends up being 1, 1. So our bounds are going to be from 0 to 1. And then the area we're looking